Hello, my name is Kendra Winchester and welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be talking about the fiction books that I read in October and November. I started nonfiction November a little early. I started in October and so I haven't been reading a ton of fiction. So I'm going to combine what I've read in November and October to give you a single video where you can peruse through these reviews. And uh, per usual, all of these books will be linked down below and I will put the narrator of the audiobooks that I listen to um, on the screen as I'm talking about them. And yeah, that's it. Let's just jump right in. I'm very excited to share these with you. Uh, one of them is Mapping the Interior by Stephen Graham Jones. And this is a novella and it is just stellar. Uh, Stephen Graham Jones wrote Mongrels and so Sam and I really enjoyed that one so we listened to this on a road trip and it's about a 12 year old boy who sees the ghost of his dad walking back to his brother's room um, in their house and what starts out as this ghost story turns into this really complex story about family and generational family trauma and what that looks like. Uh, Stephen Graham Jones is an indigenous author. Uh, he's part of the Blackfeet Nation and he writes so many beautiful stories, just in-depth stories that look at these different characters and the psychology behind them. And he particularly looks at this family as uh, a Native American family and what that looks like for them. And I just marvel at the complexity that Jones gets in his stories. And I didn't know this until uh, I looked at the inside of the book but he has a very impressive backlist. So I'm gonna enjoy going back and reading his earlier works because he has quickly become one of my favorite horror writers. I, I don't read a lot of horror. I'm just, that's just not my jam, but anything he writes is great so far. So I can't wait to read more of his stuff. So he has a novel coming out, I believe in 2020. So I cannot wait to read that one as well. So definitely check out Mapping the Interior. I made it through without extreme gushing about that book, so I'm very proud. <laughs> a book I probably will not succeed at not just gushing all over the place about is Monstrous, uh, which is uh, written by Marjorie Liu and illustrated by Sana Takata. And this is a book about this, well, she's part human and part like divine creature. Um, there are several different generations of old gods and different things in this universe, kind of magical godlike creatures and human beings are at war. And she also has is inhabited by this like demon like creature, which you can see over here. There we go. You can see over here, this demon like creature she is inhabited by. And then there's also other works like third parties, which is He's the leader of a bunch of warlords. So stuff happens. It's very complex. Love the art. It is gorgeous, uh, but it is very complex. So I feel like I have to read the series from the beginning each time a new volume of this uh, graphic novel comic series comes out. But I really love it. It is my favorite probably graphic novel series that's currently ongoing. And uh, it's just beautiful. I love the world building. It's just great. I will say this is an adult comic and graphic novel series. If you're not familiar with comics and graphic novels, I think a lot of people think of them as more for kids, but this definitely has some content warnings for uh, body horror, violence, uh, sexual assault, and, and different things in it that you just want to be aware of going into this. Uh, but it is a great graphic novel series and just beautiful. I can't get over that art. So I listened to Mapping the Interior and I read in print Monstrous. I listened to these two as well and I'm going to talk about them in a Are They Worth the Hype Fantasy Novels of the Year uh, video that I want to do. Um, Ninth House by Lee Bardugo and The Ten Doors of January uh, by Alex E. Harrow. Um, Orbit sent me this one and Flatiron sent me this one for review. So thanks so much to them. Um, I am going to be doing a video, as I said, on fantasy novels of the year and like kind of rank them and do my favorites and all sorts of things because I've been missing talking about fantasy novels and there are some other big ones of the year that I want to read before the end of the year. So I'm going to talk about them more there. Uh, but yes, I feel like one of these was definitely worth the hype. One of them wasn't. So that'll be your teaser. 
the video. So another book that I really enjoyed um, is All This Could Be Yours by Jamie Attenberg. I've only read uh, All Grown Up, which is her pr most recent novel before this. And uh, I enjoyed that book, but I really enjoyed this book because in this one, it's set in New Orleans and it's about a family. And this patriarch ends up in the hospital and we learn through the eyes or perspectives of these different family members that he was really a terrible person and very abusive. And it's really the effect that his uh, years of abuse have on the different generations of this family. And he doesn't get a voice in this book. All of the other family members do. And I think that is so incredibly important that we, there's a focus on the survivors uh, as opposed to the abuser. And I f was just in awe of what she did with how she was able to paint a portrait of a man in such a complex way and all of these different family members like you it makes sense what they're doing and why they're doing but yet you're screaming at the page like why are you doing this like choose life <laughs> like what are you doing and so the fact that you're so invested in these characters and you want the best for them but it doesn't always turn out that way and oh there's just, there's this image of this one woman in this drugstore like pat getting all this makeup and putting it into like her cart and it just stays with you. And I think that is something that Jamie Attenberg is so good at is these images of that, of different characters kind of acting out who they are as people in these unique ways. She's very good at what she does. So I'm going to be talking to Jamie Attenberg later this year for an interview that goes up, I think, in January. So I'm very excited to be able to talk to her about this. And uh, yeah, so definitely go check this one out if you haven't already. So those are the books that I enjoyed or are going to review in the future for different things. This is the book that I definitely found a bit disappointing, um, and that is The Secret Commonwealth by Philip Pullman. Now this is the sequel to His Dark Materials, but it's also part of a trilogy that's kind of extra to the story of His Dark Materials. The first book in that series is La Belle Sauvage, which is a prequel to His Dark Materials. And I'm not going to tell you how because I feel like that would be a spoiler uh, to a lot of His Dark Materials. Uh, but this book is about Lyra and it's after the events of His Dark Materials like years later and uh, I, I can't really tell you any more about that because again spoilers for His Dark Materials but I, I will say as we follow Lyra along on her adventures a lot of it just doesn't work uh, very well. Um, I really thought Jen Campbell's review of this book was very spot on. She's written about his dark materials, I think, in an academic uh, setting. So she's really studied the books as literature. And she says that, you know, it, when you have a fantasy world like this, and Philip Pullman has set up the rules of that world in his dark materials, he kind of breaks those rules in this book, and it just doesn't work. You, you then quit believing in the world that he has created and you just don't know what's going to happen because none of the rules seem to matter anymore. And she also made a great point that he seems to be writing and responding to current day events, which doesn't really fit with the book and the world. And I felt like that was an extremely accurate statement about this book as well. Uh, and personally, I found this book very episodic and there's even this weird meta moment where Lyra kind of addresses that about in reference to another book that's in the narrative, like a, a fake book that she's reading or story that she knows about, which is about a female protagonist in an episodic kind of story. But I just don't think it worked. And I think that basically was the recurring feeling of this book is that even though it's a fabulously narrated audiobook by Michael Sheen and he is a stellar narrator I and I and I enjoyed listening to this book it's like 20 some hours long I think I but I loved it I love listening to the story but overall like sitting back and looking at it like I don't think it works and while I enjoyed being back in the world as a his dark materials super fan um, I, I can't really recommend this book to anyone who isn't a super fan because I feel like you'll be disappointed because this book as a standalone um, and as part of this new trilogy, just doesn't really work that well. Uh, and there's so many elements that could have been so great in this book, but I feel like it just as a whole is just missing the mark. And somehow, even though 
this book is way longer than the His Dark Materials trilogy. I feel like that series was so much more epic in scope and complexity than this one. This one I feel like is a very straightforward in a way that is lacking. So I will read the last one again, super fan, because I want to know what happens because this ends on a cliffhanger. We'll see what happens, but I don't think that this is something I'm going to be rec recommending that people read um, who aren't just like really into His Dark Materials. All right, well, <laughs> uh, that's it for me for fiction. I will be back soon to talk about some of the nonfiction that I have read. But until then, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.